no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, Lord every, every nation, nation on earth will adore, adore you. you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Glory to your Christ, proclaim to the Gentiles. Glory to your Christ, believe it, believed in throughout the world. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After the 5,000 had eaten and were satisfied, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and proceed him to the other side towards Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. And when he had taken leave of them, he went off to the mountain to pray. When it was evening, the boat was far out on the sea and, the wa and he was alone on the shore. Then he saw that they were tossed about by wa by while rowing, for the wind was against them. About the fourth watch in, of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out. They had all seen him and were terrified, but at once he spoke to them, Take courage. It is I, do not be afraid. He got into the boat with them, and the wind died down, and they were co completely astounded. They had not understood the incident of the loaves. On the contrary, their hearts were hardened. The Gospel of the Lord. What does it mean that their hearts were hardened? <coughs> Do you know what that means? What do you think? What do you think? Well, it's kind of the opposite of that. Their hearts were hardened, mean, meaning that they weren't willing to be open. They didn't understand. Okay, so their heart, like if you have a hard heart, that would be you, you'd walk by somebody and they might, somebody might have dropped their books and you just walk by and don't help them. Okay, you don't care about anybody else. You just care about yourself. So their hearts were hardened, all right? They, they didn't have an open mind. Now, we need an open mind, though, but not so open that our brain falls out, all right? Because a lot of people will try and tell you things that just are silly, okay? Like a dog can't become a cat, right? We know that. But there might be some people who say, oh, yeah, if the, if the dog really wants to become a cat, why not? Well, that's just silly. It's not true. And we know that. But there's a lot of things in our world where big people are so confused that they think that they can do weird things. We still love them. We still have compassion for them because they don't understand. Now, did you catch that part in the first reading? It was talking about when you're young and you fear you're like going to get in trouble, you're afraid. Like say you do something wrong, you're afraid your mom or dad or your guardian, you know, whoever's taking care of you might hurt you or punish you because you didn't do something right, you didn't listen to them. And so it's all, and we're afraid, right? We're afraid because we didn't do the right thing. But see, when we follow God and we put God absolutely first and we try and do what God wants us to do, we don't have to be afraid of anything, Okay. Like God tells us to try and listen to your elders, listen to your parents, listen to your teachers. And if we do the right thing, we don't have to be afraid of anything. Because what is the whole purpose of our existence? What is God's plan for us? Do you know? What does God want for us? But 
for what end? Why does he want us to be good in what end? Like, what, what's the, the end goal? Hmm? He said to achieve excellence. To achieve excellence? But why do we want to achieve excellence? What, what's the whole point of all this? <laughs> You're right. And we glorify God. That's true. That's, those are all great things. But what is the end? What's the whole purpose of this? Why do, we, why do we follow Jesus? What do you think? Any ideas? Right. The right place. And what is the right place? Heaven. Heaven. Right. We do this so that we get to heaven. And so if we really have our hearts set on heaven, we're not even afraid of dying. If we're living the right way, like this pandemic makes a lot of people really afraid, but if we're with God, we don't even need to be afraid of that. Now, don't misunderstand. This, is, this life is hard. And God has big plans for all of you guys. You guys all have a special mission. God wants you to do something. And that's why it's important for you guys to say a little prayer every day. Say, God, help me do whatever you want me to do. Let me do what you want. Help me find and figure out what you want me to do. Because God usually does not speak to us with a voice. It's very rare that we hear the voice of God in our head. It can happen. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. But that's not usually how God works. Like there's this really sad story where these people don't believe in God. And they would take young children and they'd say, okay, close your eyes and pray for food. And they'd open their eyes, there'd be no food there. And then they'd say, okay, close your eyes and pray to our, our leader, this, this communist leader, this dictator. And after a couple minutes, they came in and put food on the table. And then they said, see, God doesn't exist. A little child might believe that. But that's not how God works. How does God speak to us? What's one of the great gifts that God gives us? How, how can we figure out who God is? Because he's always with us. He's in our heart. He is. He's always with us. He's in our heart. That's right. That's great. He's, 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 he does that sometimes with in, intimations, but more concretely, what's something simple that everybody has access to that can read? to pray, but what, what can everybody read? What can we read to learn about God? The Bible, right? God gave us, gave us the Bible so that we can learn about who He is, how He worked over the last four or five or six thousand years. The Bible tells us this cool story about God and also about how many people suffered when they didn't follow God. But it's only there to tell us and help us to know who God is. And so God speaks to us through the Bible. That's why if we're struggling or we're, we're having some trouble, it's really good to pull out that Bible and read the New Testament and see how Jesus... And that's what we do at Mass. We're reading through the New Testament and the Old Testament. We hear these stories of God's power, how he fed all those people. And yet the apostles who are with them all the time didn't get it. They were still fraidy cats. They were still afraid. And here they have God with them. Okay, so it takes time, but we keep putting our faith and trust in God, and we just do our best. We pursue perfection to achieve excellence. So one day, all of us can be in heaven and be happy forever. That's the end game. And if we don't keep our minds on that, we get really confused. All right, so let's just ask the Lord to help us love each other and be kind and help us to work really, really hard so that God can be glorified in our love and our work for him here and now on earth. And so, God has big plans for you. Don't forget that. And just try and ask him to help you understand what those are every day of your life. And for me, I kind of think I figured out what he wanted me to do in general. Now I just have to pray every day that I'm faithful to that. Okay? All right. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray for the church, that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all peoples, we pray to the Lord. For all nations throughout the world, that they may know and serve the common good and not be motivated by greed and self-interest, we pray to the Lord. For Mike and Mary and Mayer, 
the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. For an end of the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. That God will help us and remind us to ask him every day what he wants us to do, we pray to the Lord. And that all corruption be uncovered. That's the people who do bad things, who do wrong things, who don't love their neighbor, who are only concerned about their own power or their own stuff. That all that corruption be uncovered and those responsible for it lose their power or be converted so that we can have leaders that respect life, religious liberty, and all that's in accord with natural law. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. 